We have a really good shot at going to Worlds, we just have to keep performing on the level we are. We're on our way up, I think, so that's good. Definitely need to pick up a lot of wins if we want to stay out of relegation. The, the focus is really on to keep going and to keep, keep rolling. There are a few weeks left, so every game is going to matter a lot. We have to be much more consistent as a team. We just have to practice harder. If we improve, we can fight for the world. Gentlemen, and welcome back to week eight of the European LCS coming to you live from Cologne, Germany. I'm Afi Shogzaporte here with Lee D. Mansmith and Trevor Quickshot Henry. And guys, we have a lot to talk about, so let's delve right into it. Starting with Fnatic 5 0 right now, and Agnet, ooh, again, a fantastic win versus Super Hot Crew yesterday. It seems like they've hit their peak at the exact right moment. Absolutely. The 4.10 and 4.11 patch seems to be working wonders for Fnatic. You know, even speaking to the teams and the players, so I said it myself when you interviewed him yesterday, we feel we're at our peak right now. And even the players, the teams, basically saying in scrims, they are pretty much the best team in Europe right now, and it seems to be showing five wins in a row. Yeah, very impressive. On the other hand, also at the top of the table, we're slightly faltering SK and Alliance. Trevor, is that a rough patch or a rough streak for those teams? I think it's both. I think for Alliance in particular, since 4.10, the patch hasn't necessarily been favorable to them. They've lost three games in a row since the end of Super Week. But I also just think as a team, they're not necessarily making the smartest of decisions. They're struggling against any of the opponents they're playing against. For me, the biggest story though is SK Gaming. For three weeks back to back, they've picked up win-loss, win-loss, win-loss. And we're not seeing the ability to dig deep. We're not seeing the ability to stall games out from mid to late. And if SK don't change things, they're gonna topple further down the table. Yeah, they are struggling. And another team that's struggling is Gambit Gaming. And Lee, well, the two members that have come in there since yesterday, Lulux and Kubon, actually did pretty well. And it was the old school players that seemed to be struggling just a bit. Yeah, down that bottom lane, Genja and Edward were having a torrid time yesterday. They're the old guard, but it just didn't work out well for them. Whereas the new guys, as you mentioned, in the top lane, Kubon and Lulux combined got themselves the first kill for Gambit. And it was a fantastic well worked play. But unfortunately, as that bottom lane had lost, they were so far behind, they could do nothing. Just very quickly, I want to, you know, throw some food for thought in there. We heard uh, that Genja is not really talking in terms of the team communication. We believe that Gambit is now speaking English as their main language. So with that in mind, part of the reason that maybe uh, Genja and Edward may have been struggling is that lack of communication, that lack of speaking ability that can come with the rest of the team. We need to see more games from them, but they definitely have to get their heads into the game because level one, level two, you can't just blind face check people and think you can get away yeah. with it. Now we'll see what they do today, of course. And another big trend coming in is Gragas. He was picked three games out of four and two wins on the board yesterday. Yes, yeah, Soez definitely played the best. He yeah. absolutely dominated in the top lane with that Gragas against the Dr. Mundo. Um, showed how it was meant to be played. It's finally picked up in Europe where other regions have been playing. But I also think the mid lane is also very interesting. A lot of bands being focused for there. And we're seeing Fizz and Syndra uh, coming into you know, popularity for all of the European mids. So definitely going to have to look at both uh, Gragas and the mid lane picks for today's games. Yeah, and you could say, I mean, you talk about Soaz, Fnatic, maybe everything's combining that Soaz is suddenly having a good time in that top lane. He said he's enjoying it now. This patch is suiting him, suddenly Fnatic are winning. Absolutely very important. If Soaz having fun, Fnatic generally does well. And of course, there were some crazy moments that got you tweeting yesterday, but there was only one hashtag LCS Big Play to rule them all. This one comes from the action packed battle between Millennium and Alliance and features some great teams synergy thanks to the track ball master comes from at bruno marvs holy moly that kurt flank at lc uh, hashtag lcs big plays this was your most talked about play kurt will finally be getting in there in fact using his teleport he's gonna try and come around the back of them can this work for millennium there's the knock up from kevin and here comes kurt from the backside nip gonna go low they want tabs on they get the tabs as well he's creating the takes down nip and that will be four for two in favor of millennium and they managed to hold on to that tower such great play from Kerb. And it wasn't the only time he did it. 
He teleported in behind the lines multiple times, and I just really like the timing from Millennium. They picked the fights when lines couldn't counter with their ultimates. Now, it was a pleasure to see Creaton on Ezreal as well. Now, remember to get on Twitter throughout the day and tell us your favorite plays by using that hashtag, LCSBigPlays. And now let's take a quick look at the standings before we get into today's games. Despite their loss yesterday, Alliance remain in first place with 14 wins and five losses. The Fnatic are hot on their heels in second with a five-game winning streak and closing in with 12 wins and seven losses. Yeah, and for the first time in five weeks, SK are out of the top two. They've now slid down to third with 11 wins and eight losses. Millennium picked up that great win over Alliance to creep themselves equal now with the Super Hard crew who themselves suffered a loss yesterday. They're now 10 and 9. Yeah, the middle of the table is so tightly packed in Europe. Rocket sitting in sixth place, but they are looking better with each and every victory secured. And at the bottom of the table is the Copenhagen Wolves and Gambit. They are battling for last place and potentially not being able to choose their opponents in the summer promotion tournament. Yeah, now let's take a look at today's lineup. We have four matches coming your way, starting off with a bout between Alliance and Rocket. After that, it'll be Gambit Gaming versus the Super Hot Crew. Yeah, that's going to be followed by the Copenhagen Wolves. They're taking on Millennium. And we'll end that with an El Clasico match between Fnatic and SK Gaming. And right after that, uh, LCS match wraps up today. We'll send it over to Freak and Zyrene for the European Challenger Series quarterfinals, where the Ninjas in Pajamas with Alexic back in the mid lane will face off against the Unicorns of Love in a best of three. Great name. <laughs> Fantastic name. Now, guys, for info on the teams, players, the schedule, fantasy, LCS, and more, check out lolesports.com. And while you're there, you can vote on who you think will win today's matches. Now, for details about how to see the LCS live in our studios here in Cologne, click on the tickets link at the top of the page. There are only three weeks left in the summer split, so get them while you can. And now I also want to hear from you guys. Head over to Twitter and tell us who do you think is the most underrated European LCS pro this split and why? Well, for me, I, I got to think towards the top lane, Kevin. He always gets overlooked, and yet this is his fourth season being involved in League of Legends. Always performed, always reliable in that top lane. Yeah, definitely a great player. I personally think Nick from Gambit needs a little bit of love. He's definitely delivering. He's had some great performances. His champions have sort of fallen by the wayside, but he's definitely uh, putting some points on the board. You guys at home, write to us at LOL Esports. Use that hashtag LCS, and we'll be reading some of our favorite responses on air later in the show. Now it's time.